This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Well, hey, everybody. It is Jay Crater, and I want to say welcome to the show. I'm recording this on Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to everybody out there. And um, what I wanted to do today is um, get you caught up on government benefits. Okay, so some things have happened to me in regards to unemployment benefits and also in regards to the PPP loan. So what I'd like to do is uh, drink a little Nespresso and get into it. So what a ride, huh? What a ride it has been. So I stopped driving on February 3rd. February 3rd was the last day that I drove. And uh, I applied for unemployment, uh, I believe in uh, early March. And I got turned down, told I got, you know, zero benefits. I appealed. Then the PUA came out. And uh, then a woman called me from the EDD and she wanted to interview me about my relationship with Lyft to determine if I was an employee. So I answered her questions. And then she asked me to send in some 1099s to verify my revenue. And I said, nah, I'm going to wait because I can just get the money through the PUA. So then uh, the PUA thing happened on, what, April 28th. We all applied here in California. And, and then within uh, a couple of weeks, I had $5,938. I had a debit card that I received uh, from Bank of America. And, uh, you know, I, f I set up my online account, transferred $5,000, and then waited another week and transferred and transferred another 938 and that was based on getting $167 a week plus uh plus starting in uh April plus getting an extra $600 per week so for the weeks that I was not working you add all that up it came out to $5938 and that was through May 9th <laughs> So here's what then happened. 
So I was thinking, well, how am I going to get that up to 450, right? That's a big number. That's a big difference between 450 a week and 167. That's about $300 a week. And I've been at this now 15 weeks, 15 times three, that's like another $4,500. So I contacted the woman that questioned me about um, Uber and Lyft or about my relationship with Lyft. And she had determined that I was a common law employee. So I said, uh, are you still open to me sending you my 1099s so that you can verify that I qualify for more money? And uh, she said, sure. So I sent her my 1099s. And my 1099s are in the name of my LLC. So she came back to me and said, um, that's great, but I need something that ties you to the LLC. She said, maybe you can go look in the Lyft app or look in the Lyft website, and there's something with your name on it and your LLC name on it. So I went and I looked, and I looked at my tax documents, and I didn't see anything like that. So what I eventually sent her was the uh, the document that I got back in 2008 when I set up the LLC that assigned me the... Uh, you know, the employer identification number, the EIN. So that was addressed to me and it showed, you know, my EIN, which is what is on my um, 1099s. So she accepted that. And that was about 10, 10 days ago. And I, I haven't received any notifications or anything like that. So then I was talking to uh, a friend of mine and she said, well, you know, you can send them an email through the website. And I said, really? So two days ago, I sent an email from the website saying, so-and-so from the EDD verified my income. You know, when will I be able to get it increased to 450 and get all my, you know, retroactive weeks paid for? So then yesterday, I looked and it showed my, uh, you know, there's like this summary page and it shows you weekly amount and, and it used to say 167. And now it says 450. So I thought, wow, that's really, really great. So now I'm waiting to see um, that I still haven't received any money for the last two weeks. So um, in California, you can certify um, starting on, uh, on Sunday. So the week ends on a Saturday. So it goes from Sunday to Saturday. So then yesterday, the 24th, I was able to go in and certify, which means you, you know, put in some companies you've contacted who aren't hiring, and, you know, that you've actually been available for work and you weren't able to get a job. So, and that's pretty easy because of course, who's hiring? Not many people are hiring now. Um, so um, now I'm, so now I'm waiting to see, you know, what they're going to put into my, into my uh, account. The other thing that's kind of cool that I found is that um, with, at least with in California, there's a Bank of America uh, prepaid debit card app. So you can put the app on your phone and then you can set notifications or uh, you can set notifications, but you can also set it to send you an email when any, whenever any money gets deposited. So instead of going and checking into, you know, your state's website to see if you've gotten any money put into your account, or logging on and having to, you know, look at your um, online account for your debit card, you can actually set it up so that they just send you uh, an email to tell you that money's been put into your account. So I thought that was pretty great. So I set that up this morning. And uh, given today's a holiday, I don't expect anything to happen today, but I do expect something to happen tomorrow. Okay. So if you're wondering, you know, how do you get your, your weekly amount up from whatever you're currently at to the maximum, my recommendation is find a way to communicate with your, um, you know, your unemployment department through their website and just ask, you know, who can I send my 1099s to and, uh, and see if you can kind of get in ahead of the rush because at some point they're going to make it clear how you can do that and then there's going to be a, 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 a tsunami of 1099s getting in going into the state because everybody wants to get that amount clear uh, increased so if you can get ahead of the game by being a little proactive i would recommend that so thus far 
um, since this whole thing started, I have received a stimulus check for $1,200. I received the EIDL $1,000. And I received from unemployment $5,938. So, so far, I've gotten $8,138. So, I certainly am not complaining. But that brings me to the next topic, because some of you may be saying, well, what about your $20,000 PPP loan? You know, and I was super excited uh, about this loan because I was told that I was approved. I signed the loan docs. I gave them my uh, voided check so that they could, you know, direct deposit that 20K right into my bank account. And then over the next few days, I, I started to hear in, in the news that the government was changing all the rules. I was like, well, is that going to impact me? So when I applied, I did not have to provide a tax return. All that was required was, you know, bank statements to verify how much money I, I earned and then a, a, a payroll ledger. I also gave them some 1099s, right? So I had lots of documents, but not my tax return. The challenge with us drivers and tax returns is that if they are looking at our net income, we don't have much, right? We get such a big deduction for mileage that uh, our net income is very, very low relative to the amount of money that we actually brought in. And that's fantastic for us because we get to pay very little in taxes. A very small percentage of our revenue gets pay, gets taxed. But if uh, if that's what they're looking at to base, um, you know, how much we have in payroll for the payroll protection program, the PPP, that's going to make the loan amount very small. So as I did my research, I started to watch some different YouTube videos like you do. And in fact, the rules have changed. If I if I then went to the, the Lendia website, it now says the two, 2019 Schedule C is now required. If you haven't yet filed a Schedule C, you must complete one and submit it with your 1099 miscellaneous. So I thought, okay, well, maybe I just missed the, I made the cut and, and you know, that's great. But then uh, I watched another video and they explained to me how to calculate how much is forgivable, right? And the forgivable amount has changed also. So the way you now calculate the forgivable amount, it is based solely on line 31 of your 2019 Schedule C. So my Schedule C, line 31, was like $250, right? Because I, I write off everything. So uh, as a result of that, I realized that the amount that I could actually get forgiven out of that $20,000 was like $40. <laughs> it was nothing. So basically, I would be borrowing 20 and then within two years, I'd have to pay back 20 and that simply did not make any sense to me. I, I realize it's cheap money, but I have no reason to have $20,000 um, just sitting around in my bank account. I suppose if I were like a stock guy, you know, I could invest that and certainly make more than 1% on my money, but I'm not, and I'm not interested in learning how to do that. So rather than just deal with the hassle of it, I said, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I withdrew my application. Now, this happened to a lot of people. A lot of people actually got their loans and then they wanted to return their money. And the deadline to, re to do that was May 18th, which is a week ago. So you, it was called the safe harbor uh, deadline. So you could just hold the money and then return it by the 18th and there'd be no penalties. Now, a lot of people probably missed that deadline, and now they have to figure out what they're going to do with the money, are they going to return it, and what are the penalties that they're going to incur. But that's why I returned it, because it was not going to be 100% forgivable. Initially, it was. Initially, it was, give me the 20000 I will write a check to myself for 20000 It's 100% forgivable, and that's great. The other question that has come up a lot and I just want to address that before I wrap this up, is what do you do if you receive the PPP, that's the loan, and unemployment insurance, right? So 
I talked to the underwriter for my loan and I said, uh, you know, what do you do if you get the PPP and you're getting unemployment? And he says, flat out, you can't do both. So his recommendation was to, once you got the loan, stop certifying for unemployment benefits. So you know how you have to report that you've been looking for work? So from that point on and for two and a half months, um, don't certify. So you will stop getting unemployment benefits. So, so treat your PPP loan as your unemployment benefits for two and a half months. And then if you're still unemployed at the end of two and a half months, then you can begin certifying again and resume your unemployment benefits. So that makes sense to me. Um, I've heard some people say that you can double dip, which means you can accept both at the same time, but you run the risk of getting into, into trouble later down the road. So my recommendation is fly straight. You don't have to be looking over your shoulder, worried about some big penalty. Um, yeah, so just do, do it with integrity and you should just be fine. So bottom line, I've got nothing to complain about. I'm excited to see what uh, my next payment is for, for my unemployment now that they've jacked me up to 450 per week. Um, I'm excited that I think the government is going to extend the unemployment benefits for at least another three months. This pandemic is far worse and more severe than anyone could have predicted. Uh, I mean, over 20% of America is out of work. It's going to take us uh, a long time to get back to where we are strong. And uh, as I said, Trump wants uh, to get reelected. He, he needs a government, he needs a, an economy that's running smooth. And uh, to have th 40 million Americans uh, suddenly, you know, stop getting the big benefits at the end of July, July, August, September. Let's see, the election is uh, the first week in, in, first week in November. So I'm pretty sure this is going to continue on at least through then uh, because he is going to want to get reelected. I, I, I just can't see how that's not going to happen. So let's... Uh, Let's get through this together. I'll uh, keep in updating you when I learn more as things change. I uh, really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me as I uh, explain uh, some of the changes that, are, that have occurred in my situation. And ho hopefully some of the concepts and things I shared with you will help you get clearer on your situation and give you some ideas of things that you can do. All right. All right. That's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it out there every day. I honor you. I thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Jay Crater, also known as Nomad Jay, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.